وأيما رجل من أمتي أدركته الصلاة فليصلي. So any man of this ummah that finds the salah entering wherever he is, then let him pray. Oh, how many people have you heard? I was caught somewhere, and you know there's dogs everywhere, and we can't pray unless we have our sajada with us, unless we have our special prayer rug. And how many people have you seen thinking that you can only pray on these rugs? You'll find some people going so overboard in this prayer rug fanaticism that they bring prayer rugs to masjids. Because they say sometimes children are running around in the masjid with shoes on, you know. And I don't know the people who maintain the masjid if they're really cleaning the carpets or not. I just want to be safe. They bring in their own rug. Have you ever seen someone bring a rug to a masjid and put that rug on top of the rug of the masjid? So the ease of the religion, Allah Ta'ala wants ease for you, He doesn't want a hardship for you. Is the marble floor downstairs in the weight room, can you pray there? Yeah? What's your proof? But people walk down there with their shoes on. This hadith right here, Barakallahu feek. Now, this hadith is your proof. The whole earth has been made as the whore, a place that you can use to purify yourself, and a masjid. And a masjid. Amazing, right? That the whole earth has been made a masjid, and there are people who think the only place you can pray safely is a few square feet of, you know, very selected masjids that are well maintained. Because why many masjids, you can't really even trust them. And the deen of Allah is easy. إِيَّاكُمْ وَالْغُلُوْ deen. Be warned of ghulu, of excessiveness, fanaticism in the religion. People believe sometimes that you need this rug, and it's not even an issue of tahara. It's just, you don't offer salah except on a rug. That's why it's called a prayer rug. If you want to pray, you have to have a prayer rug. And you find people with such a limited and rigid understanding. When the salat comes in, when they're traveling and they don't have a prayer rug, they don't even pray. Because they say, what? Oh, you know, I, I left my city. I didn't even have my prayer rug. I wanted to be back by the horror and I wasn't thinking. And now they feel they're out there. Clean grass, clean open area, spacious earth can pray anywhere. And they feel restricted based on their opinionated restrictiveness that they put on their own selves. And look at how it resembles the fiqh of the Jews. Because what did the Jews do? They put more and more rules on themselves until what? They couldn't fulfill them and then they stopped obeying. Doesn't it resemble the Jews? You find a person delaying the salat outside of its time because he doesn't believe he could have prayed anywhere until he gets home or to the masjid. He feels like at the mall? No, you can't pray at the mall. You can't pray downtown. You can't pray at the university. And it's clean lecture halls and places where there's no one there that you can go into and pray and it's no problem at all. Yet they're rigid in their understanding. They feel that it's not appropriate, it's not right, it's not clean. Just based on ignorance of the religion. The religion is easy, alhamdulillah. And Allah has made for this ummah the whole earth. Now what that means is, conversely, the previous nations, what? Were they allowed to pray just anywhere? Ah, the previous nations were restricted to salah in certain places only. How do we know that? Comes in one of the narrations. Where's the narration? In a narration by Amr ibn Shu'ayb. He said, وَكَانَ مَنْ قَبَلِ إِنَّمَا كَانُوا يُصَلُّونَ فِي كَنَائِسِهِمْ The people before me, in addition to the earth has been made as a place of purification and prayer for me, the people before me used to have to pray in their churches. In their kanais, the plural of kanisa, the plural of kanisa, church, right? They used to have to pray in their what? Their masajid or ma'abid, their places of ibadah. Not necessarily the word kanisa is required, but kanaisuhum means their ma'abid, their places of worship. They were restricted. It's understood, that's the opposite understanding of this being something special and distinctive for our messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That means the previous messengers didn't share this. They didn't have this affordability to pray anywhere where they want. Rather, they were only allowed to pray, and their ummah was only allowed to pray in certain specific places. And Allah Ta'ala knows best.